Uh, there is, for example, one very notorious uh, portage in Killarney Provincial Park that's uh, 2.3 kilometers long. I mean, that is a, that's a beast, and it basically takes you the entire morning to, uh, to do that, uh, that portage. But these maps are very, very handy then for planning a trip. Generally, we go for a week, and I think the thing that probably limits, really limits that how long we're going for is food, right? You can, it, food weighs a lot, and there's only so much of it you, you can really take with you. So generally about a week works for us. Obviously, you can do a two-day trip, a three-day, whatever you like, but that seems to work for us. And certainly the effort of having gone all the way up to a place like that, staying a week really makes it quite worthwhile. So there are, there are a number of these places that are really, really great to, to go to. Uh, certainly up in the Adirondacks also, uh, there are a number of places there where you can do some back uh, country uh, camping. Uh, I haven't done that myself, but again, I've got some books here that if anybody's interested in taking a look at, you can refer to them. There's also a couple of good maps, canoeing maps also, that help you understand uh, where you can go up there and where you can stay. And Bill, for anybody interested in starting out and not sure what they're doing, uh, there's places as close as Salmon River Reservoir, which is a couple hours away. Uh, every spring, years ago, I used to uh, teach a beginner canoe and kayak camping trip, and we used to do an overnight up there. So you can find places fairly close by where you can get out of the way places and uh, try it for a night or two and, and without being that far away from your vehicles or civilization, uh, if you forget something, you know, it's easy easy to get started. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it just occurred to me, too, when you said that, there are a couple of places I have been up to in the Adirondacks that are great for starter places to go to, one of which is Lake Lila. Uh, it's a great little lake to go to. There's one portage from the parking lot over to the put-in spot. That's it. It's like, I think it's... Maybe 100 quarter meters, mile. Quarter, quarter mile, mile. Yeah. is it a quarter mile? It's, a quarter it's mile. relatively short, and you can make as many trips as you need to, of course, to get your stuff over to the uh, put-in place. Little Tupper is easy to get Little to. Tupper is another good one. We've been there. And then another one that is a uh, favorite is uh, St. Regis Pond also. Another great little place to go to. So these are all ones that are reasonably close by in the Adirondacks. No sound. Very amenable to a two, three day trip. Middle of like certainly if you want to get yourself started. And if you like to, if you need to bail out early, it's a pretty short ways back to your car. Anybody have any questions about places to, to go to? How long is a reasonable time? Well, <laughs> how good is your bat? Bat, and you know how, much how, how uh, you know. Obviously, you don't want these things to be painful experiences, uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about how you minimize the pain of doing something like that. But also, uh, it has a lot to do with your physical condition. You know, whether or not you've got any issues with regards to carrying stuff and that sort of thing. But uh, I don't have I don't have any problem with. Uh, these are all metric in Canada, in particular with five, six hundred meter uh, uh, portages, you know, quite reasonable. So, uh, and generally, too, it depends on where you go, of course, but most of the portages are going to be flat. Okay, so you, you're going up and down a little bit, but generally it's going to be flat. So, something like that. Sometimes portages are under meters, you're going around the rapids or something like that. You have to be on a stream. Uh, Sometimes around a dam, there's one at the beginning of, uh, of off of Joe Lake in, um, in Algonquin, where it's literally you're going around a dam, so it's like you know 100 meters maybe. Okay, a little bit about uh, equipment that you'd uh, want to consider for, uh, taking with you. Uh, you are going to carry everything, right? Uh, you don't have to carry it all at one time, but you're going to end up carrying everything. And so you want to make that as easy as possible. But certainly the biggest thing you're going to be carrying is this. All right.
right? And having a, you don't want to be lugging around a Roman aluminum canoe. I have seen it done. I have seen poor times done this, usually by some 18 year old who has a white younger done people before and doesn't quite know what he's getting into. But at any rate, we like to have a canoe which is lightweight. Now, these can be a fairly substantial investment. This is a Kevlar canoe, it's really quite lightweight. Uh, obviously a two-person canoe right here, about 43 pounds or so. For me, that's comfortable uh, to carry. Um, I, I realize, too, that many times you're not just going to go out uh, over to Oak Creek uh, or Bay Creek or Oak to Creek? Oak Orchard and drop a couple thousand dollars on a canoe. And so, luckily, there are outfitters around that will rent these things to you for a week or so. I know uh, Algonquin Outfitters, for example, is a big one. They've got tons and tons of canoes there. And they're all, they're all Kevlar. They're really lightweight uh, canoes, and they're quite nice. Uh, you can also tell where the uh, Algonquin Outfitter canoes have been because when you get to really shallow areas <laughs> and there are rocks, you see all these brightly colored streaks on the rocks as people have uh, scraped the bottom of their uh, rented canoes on those rocks. So having a canoe that's really lightweight is, is important, okay? Even even a uh, fiberglass canoe, I've got one of those also, the same size, 17 foot. Uh, that thing's going to weigh 60 some odd pounds. And after you've carried that for a quarter mile or so, and you've done that a few times, you're, you're really going to notice it, right? So and if you're not protecting, bring whatever you got. Yeah, and uh, so try and keep the weight down, all right? Other stuff that makes life a little bit easier, and that will will prevent mm -hmm. uh, severe problems should you capsize is a bag like this, a waterproof bag for carrying your gear. Uh, these are really nice ones. These are sea line. Uh, you know, complete with a hip strap, uh, shoulder strap, it's like very, very comfortable uh, to uh, wear. And you can stuff in an enormous amount of stuff inside these things also. That's, of course, one of the things you really have to watch out for. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw Into the Wild, but there's a really great scene at the beginning where this gal loads up her backpack with all this stuff, tries to put it on, ends up falling backwards on her back, and like some sort of bug, okay, that's gotten herself upended. She's just got her legs and arms kind of sticking up in the air and can't get going. So don't load the thing up too much. But on the other hand, when you're putting in things like uh, sleeping bags and, and stuff like that, which you really want to keep dry, uh, you know, they're not going to weigh that much. And balancing the weight amongst these is, uh, is, is important also to make sure that portage experience is going to be comfortable. We take three of these, okay, Shay and I, when we go, right, take three. Two big ones like this, okay, that contain, uh, you know, all of our camping gear, basically everything except our food. And then we've got a reserved one that's just for food, and it's smaller than this. It's the heaviest one, even though it's the smallest in the street. And these things fit very, very nice in mid -tips inside here. One, two, and a third one. I like to have my uh, my foot area free up here so this no bag goes down in here. And this is where I've got my nav station, okay? This is where I've got my map and GPS. Uh, so I like to keep this area clear right here. And then Shay is sitting up front. To get started, though, you know, that's a significant investment. Yeah, these are. Uh, you getting started, this is a water sport. So anything that you want to stay dry has to go into something that's going to keep it dry. You know, these are uh, a similar type of pack. They're a, a fabric that's uh, got a poly lining and it's waterproof. Significantly less expensive than that. Uh, people start out with backpacks, if you have a backpack. You just want to make sure that you have a liner inside, or this is a little different type of portage pack. But this also has a big plastic liner that these use. So after a while, and you have to be careful with things like that, that because if you put anything that rubs on the inside, it's going to rub a hole through. These things, they're replaceable, and these are a pretty rugged pack. Uh, you can use a backpack. The problem with a standard backpack is they're long. They don't fit in the, between the, the gunnels that well, where this type of pack and that pack does. Um, years ago, 
I found Eureka used to make these. They haven't made them in quite a few years. That's a but nice this product. was water, waterproof, and I put all my day stuff in here. And it fits easy as a, as a third pack as well. So there's a lot of things on the market. You can get started reasonably inexpensive. You don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of, of new gear. If you've backpacked before, you've got most of the gear that you need. Right. Again, it's small, it's lightweight. You will be carrying stuff if you're going to portage. If you're not portaging, it doesn't matter. You're carrying from the car down to the foot in and off you go. We do carry, you know, things like this, chairs, fold-up chairs, tables, because we can. Um, and that, again, like Bill says, it's one of the, the pleasures of canoe and, and uh, camping out of the boat is you don't have to carry it all the way. Um, but you can get started minimally. Yeah, thanks. So, you know, we're, we're not, uh, I'm not going to go into the usual camping stuff like stoves and cookware and everything else like that. I assume most people have, have got a grip on that. You're probably not going to bring two burner Coleman stove, okay? Uh, you're going to have a lightweight, a lightweight backpacking stove and the like. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I, I bring along a, an old, uh, old aluminum frying pan. Uh, I like to cook while I'm out there and, uh, you know, I make pizzas and I make Fries. Nancy? The what? Pie. Pie. Oh, okay. <laughs> you you can you can bring whatever you're willing to carry. You can bring along. You know, bake packers. You can bring along. French press. Well, okay. French press. Okay. If you if you're in serious about your coffee, you can bring along a French press. Uh, but I'm not going to go into detail on all of, of that kind of stuff. Um, there's obviously a lot of other equipment that goes with this. Uh, we're just showing you the packs and the like, but you're going to be putting other kinds of things in here. Um, I always carry a GPS with me. Uh, one of the things you'll discover, if you haven't discovered already, is many of these lakes that we tend to go on are, uh, are dam lakes, okay? They're basically reservoirs of one sort or another. And so because of that, they're going to have a number of arms that just kind of stretch all over the place. And finding your way around these things can be a real challenge because when you look out from only a few feet above the water, out to the horizon, all you see are trees out there. Okay? That, and it's hard to know if it's actually an inlet someplace. Having a GPS is really handy for finding your way or around. Or finding your campsite. What? Or finding the campsite. Find it, or finding the portage point. <laughs> okay? Yeah, this could be a real challenge. So uh, I definitely bring along a GPS. What are you using for GPS? I've got an ancient one, so Garmin um, GPS map tool, but it's, it's an old one, probably 10, 12 years ago at this point. Where do you get your maps? Uh, these days online. You don't have to buy them anymore or anything else like that. I mean, cell phones, I guess, too. You know, you can you can get some very, very nice navigation software just with your cell phone. I mean, battery life may be an issue with something like that, but uh, yeah, you can definitely, there are a number of options available. I'm not the most knowledgeable person about GPSs. I still use my old one. Uh, there are other people at the club who definitely know more than I do about that. Um, uh, other things you're going to be certainly you've got to have your PFDs with you and the like. Uh, uh, there's always a bailing bucket in the back right there. Uh, lines in order to be able to tie up when you come into shore and the like. And by the way, you never leave the canoe just untied someplace. Okay, you definitely want to tie it up. Bad things could happen when it picks up. Anything else that you can think of that's kind of critical? Food barrels? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Bill, did you want to? Uh, okay. Uh, this is a, a great way to carry food that is bear proof, okay? Well, I'd say more very road bear proof. Bears, that's Okay, it's not bear proof. <laughs> <laughs> that comes off. Uh, what we, uh, what uh, Shay and I do, and a number of us have done in the past, is we tie up uh, into trees, okay? Uh, kind of an elaborate little scheme. You don't just dangle it from a branch from one tree. The bears are much more clever than that, okay? But you have to do is find two trees and basically suspend the bag at least 10 feet off the ground. At least 10. Something like 10 feet. They recommend 15, but I think it's a little excessive. At any rate, at least 10 feet off the ground so that the bears aren't going to get your food. That'll bring a very rapid end to your, uh, to your <laughs> experience. Um, okay, here's the standard. This is bear proof. Okay. 
The problem I've got with these things is, man, they're all good. And then, you want, to, you want to get your marriage soon, okay? You have your spouse carry this thing, okay? Just put it here, and then just pull it up into the tree. So a number of ways to do that. They also make those in a two and a half gallon size much better. Than yeah. At least with those, they're all rodent proof. So that's, that's your biggest concern, is rodents. I just want to mention, people should pay attention to wind Maybe you mentioned that already, but there's... Well, well out on lakes, we don't have to worry too much about currents. Maybe wind-driven currents. Okay. But certainly wind is something... Yeah, you got to be careful about that. The, the very first trip that we went out was with Bill and Ruth, and uh, we got out onto something called David Lake in, uh, in Killarney, and there were white caps out there. It was the first time we'd ever done this, man, and it was, it was white knuckle time. Uh, one of the nice things, though, about a canoe, which is laden with all your gear and the like, assuming you've got enough freeboard above the water itself, okay, one of the nice things is they tend to be very stable, okay? They sit lower in the water, and uh, they don't get kicked around quite as much. So that sets uh, a real advantage. Uh, there is a lot of stuff that we end up bringing with us, and certainly, uh, in order to keep all of that organized, uh, I go to some trouble to uh, put together a checklist, you know, <laughs> everything I want to bring, you know. I mean like everything, okay? Because otherwise you are you are gonna forget things. And it's a real bummer to find out that you don't have any stove fuel, for example, okay? It's, it's a real pain. So organizing yourself with something like this is a really, really good idea. Hey Bill, I think somewhere's in our website is a checklist. Is there? I'd have to go back and look again, but I, last I knew there, there was a checklist. Okay, in there. good, good. Uh, I, I'd like to take a look at it and compare it with what I've got. Uh, also, what I do, and I'm, I'm, I take all the food for Shay and me, I put together a menu for the entire week, and all the yeah. food we're going to need, and then each meal is actually packed up in an individual bag, so you just keep pulling them out. That way you're kind of assured you've got everything you need, and you minimize the amount of time you spend. joint stuff. I mean, generally, we're, each boat is self-contained. Generally. Yeah, generally. Yeah. And in the group that we go with. We share wine. We, it's not it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing I like to do with food is I like to bring one extra meal. In case something, even if it's ramen noodles, having one extra meal of some type. Yeah. Yeah. And something to pass also. You know, you have a little, maybe a cocktail hour or something like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that, that could be really neat. Uh, Who's always spamming beans? What? Always spamming beans. <laughs> we try and do a little bit better than spamming beans. <laughs> um, so, so that that gives you a, a, a bit of an idea of, of what it takes to uh, to do something like this. Some of the equipment you need to bring along. Some of the places that you can go to. Um, some of the rationale of why we uh, end up doing this sort of thing. Um, is there anything else? As I said, I've got a bunch of books here and maps, and after we're done, you're more than welcome to uh, just take a take a little bit of a look through these things. We've talked to quite a bit of information over the years. Does anybody have any questions? Everything that he talked about with canoe, you can do the same thing in kayak. The biggest thing, difference in kayak is you've got a lot of small bags, dry bags, instead of one large bag. Yeah. to fit inside all of the cockpits. Yeah, I, how do you portage a Good kayak? idea with a kayak also is do a dry run before you even go on how to pack your boat. Because otherwise you'll get wherever you're going 
you got this humongous bag and you're trying to shove it in a little hole. It just won't work. And then unpack it and see if you can pack it back in because That's right. it never, it That's never right. goes as tight the second time. Experience. Yeah, and then <laughs> the weight to uh, spread out has got to be right too because otherwise you'll be paddling sideways. You can also shift the weight in the boat depending on what the direction the wind's coming at you so that you can, if the wind's coming in directly at you, you want to have the front end a little bit heavier to stabilize it. If the wind's behind you, you can shift some of the weight to the back. You also want to do that too if, you're, if your uh, canoe companion isn't as heavy as you are. I mean, Shea is considerably lighter than I am, and so the boat tends to do one of these things, all right? So that's why the food bag goes right up front. As close as I can get it to her, that's quite a bit of ballast right there. To try. It tends to balance the boat out. Uh, other couple, of, just I just thought of one of the things: bring an extra paddle. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, there, there are some things that you, you know, if if you lose them, if you have a, a break in them or something like that, uh, you can very rapidly get into a lot of trouble. So having a uh, an extra paddle that's just kind of strapped on top that you can grab easily, because usually things like that happen at the worst possible times, so and you want to be able to access it uh, quickly. Anything else that? Uh, High effort taking in. Excuse me. Tie everything in. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything. Uh, well, these these bags. What's one thing that's nice about these when they're packed in? At first, they go in quite snugly, all right. But then on top of that, I run um, bungees just to. The, the, of course, what's nice about these is just about every one of them is going to have a density low in the water. It's going to float. Okay, they're not going to sink. And so, uh, so you can retrieve the stuff. It may be bouncing around out there, but at least you can retrieve everything. Uh, but certainly you want to you want to hold everything down. Yeah. One thing okay. to keep in mind, like doing portages or packing up your camp, if you get a a method down where you do it the same all the time, you're less likely to leave something behind. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I thought you brought that. Yeah. Um, so having a system. Yeah, especially when you're working with a partner of the boat, uh, you know, getting your routine down where you, you just know that everything's going to be covered, is, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Have you ever flipped the canoe in the middle of the lake? I mean, not at shore, not no. getting out of it. No, no, luckily not. And, uh, I, I, I work really hard to make sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. But uh, no, we, we have you ever had a capsize? Uh, only in the Pine Barrens, uh, solo, trying to get through a bunch of downed trees, but that was in an observer. But not, that was in Not packed. loaded. Not loaded, <laughs> right, right. I mean, that's a different story. I mean, you capsized and loaded. Pine Barrens or not. Uh, you know, we were, again, this was up in uh, a I remember this was, we happened to be behind uh, another boat, uh, Rich and Gale, as a matter of fact. And uh, we were just watching them, you know, and, and all of a sudden it was like Rich was in the back, was ejected. I mean, it was almost like he popped out of the boat. And apparently they had hit uh, maybe a snag or something like that underwater, and it had just bounced the boat enough and actually flipped him right out of the boat. And he was an experienced sailor, though. He was able to get himself back in again uh, pretty readily. Uh, but I, I know one of the things on my action item list is to attend one of the workshops down in Aronquay Bay, uh, working on rescue. I, I, frankly, I've never done. I've thought in my head how you go about doing it, but uh, you know, it's that's, yeah, one, of those, that's one of those things that you can you, you definitely want to prevent the other rescue boat from being capsized. So yeah, it's, it's one thing I've never heard. But no, we've never. Uh, been, we've been through some some pretty uh, pretty hairy uh, weather and. Do you take a weather radio with you? No. Worry about what? Answer your question. Some people do. Always bring duct tape. <laughs> it's on the list. <laughs> yeah, duct tape will take you through a lot of things. I mean, assuming you haven't uh, experienced a massive a break in your canoe, you can, you know, a whole where something where it punctures it. This is, this is really tough stuff, though. I mean, it's, it's not for nothing they make uh, you know, the armor, body armor out of this stuff. So it, it's pretty good at resisting uh, that kind of thing. You might spring a leaf or something like that. You know. <laughs> a duct tape. Always duct tape. Okay. Any other questions? 
I just got uh, two more destinations to add that yeah. are uh, in the Adirondacks, about a three hour drive or so. Cranberry Lake has dozens of, of uh, primitive campsites right on the shore. Uh, they're all just first come, first serve, and you can put in in, uh, in Wanakina. It's a good, good spot. And then uh, just north of there is Stillwater Reservoir. Stillwater, right. It has, uh, again, dozens of sites that are all just uh, primitive sites, first yeah. come, first serve. And, you know, if you, if you paddle, you know, two or three miles, you can get to a lot of them. Yeah. Does the water have motorized? Yeah. Yeah, yeah both, both, both of those do, actually. Right. That's one of the advantages of going to a place like Algonquin or Killarney. It's, it's a yeah, powerboat free. If you've got a portage there, there's nobody bringing a motorboat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the other thing, too, about going to a motorboat free lake is if you want to, you can paddle around at night if, if you want to. Just go out there, you know? We saw the uh, Northern Lights one time up in Killarney just by paddling out into the lake at night. It was really beautiful. Uh, I was gonna, I just thought of one other thing, Chris, and you mentioned that, and that is if you do want to go to Canada, uh, you've got to reserve those sites. They're all, what they, the Canadian system, I think it works the same for all the parks, is that uh, when you make a reservation, you make a reservation for a spot on the lake, okay? You don't get a particular spot, you get but you're guaranteed you will have a spot someplace. And those uh, those book up extremely rapidly. Five months in advance is when you uh, when you book, okay? And by the end of that day, five months in advance, probably all the sites on the popular lakes will be, will be booked. Okay, so something to keep in mind if you have an interest in going up to uh, Canadian provincial You pay for those too. They're yeah. the price last time I was there was 20 years ago, and it wasn't bad, but what I read is the price has definitely gone up. But what's the current, uh, what was it for? Oh, I don't remember. Massasol? I don't remember. I don't remember. Well, one thing uh, folks should be aware of that they do in Elgin, uh, Kalani, excuse me, is there's usually limited stays on each site, typically three days, three nights, something like that. And okay. expect it to go down again. Okay. Thank you for the, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we generally stay maximum about that amount of time. Uh, I know Gary is uh, has got a, a bit of a, he wants to move things along and he likes to move from site to site. Uh, but we generally like to set up uh, at a nice site uh, and then spend a day or two just doing unloaded day tripping around uh, the area. It's a lot of fun to, to swimming and that sort of thing. So it's, it's, uh, it's different styles for different people. Any other, any other questions? When you do that, anything in particular you wouldn't leave at your site, or you feel pretty comfortable? Well, I mean, your 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 uh, campsite is set up, okay. So we're bringing along uh, basically certainly all the safety gear and the like. Uh, but then beyond that, uh, bringing along you know the lunch, the you know, maybe a camera, binoculars, that sort of thing. Uh, but generally, leaving everything else uh, behind, you know. Why? Why? Why bring? And no, we're generally not doing portages either. A number of these lakes are, are big. I mean, they they aren't uh, large open expanses of water. Not a lot of them are. But again, they'll have all these nooks and crannies you can go and explore. You know, see bird life and all kinds of plants. You know, uh, I know Luan uh, Miro likes to, to bring along a camera and do some beautiful uh, nature photography and all. So it's it's a nice way to spend a day or two just uh, doing it unloaded without carrying your stuff. Anything else? Well, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I've got some things here if you'd like to take a look. Uh, we'll be happy to share those with you. And uh, let us know what you'd like to do. I mean, uh, we're always open to find out what it is that uh, GBC members are, are interested in doing, and we'd be happy to hear from you about your interests. Okay? okay again, thank you very much.